Okay, here we go. We're on recording now. So today we're going to be doing a study on the differences in the book of Amos. Um, and so let's see here. I'm going to go to my document. I have a word pad here. Okay, so we're going to start off here. I want to start off with reading something for someone, uh, for, for all of our viewers here. This is from Jeremiah 23, 27, which says, who divides that men may forget my law by their dreams. So here's the context already, forgetting the Torah by these false prophets' dreams, which they have told everyone to his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name in the worship of Baal. Keep that in mind. This is what we're going to be dealing with here, with the Adonai here. In the worship of Baal, they have forgotten Yahuwah's name. Okay, just keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. So, um, Sister Sally, if you please could read um, Amos chapter 1, verse 8 in your version. Verse 8, and I shall cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and the one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. And I shall turn my hand against Ephraim. And my Bible says uh, Ekron. Is that right? Ekron. And the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, said the Master Yahuwah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, it should say Ekron, I would think. Um, I don't think there's any difference in the restored names. Uh, okay, so my, this, wow. They're actually missing Yahuwah here, okay? It says, and I will destroy the inhabitants of Azotus, and a tribe shall be cut off from Ascalon. But the only difference is the, there's an A ah instead of an E in Septuagint, not a big difference. Um, and I will stretch out my hand upon Acheron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says Yahuwah. So let's see, where is... Oh, okay, the difference, my bad, I misspoke. The difference here is that they put Adonai here. Okay, so they put H136 in front of the H3069. So if you have a sephir, it would say, in the Masoretic text, it would say Adonai Yahuwah. So again, the Adonai is showing up. Um, that's our first one where you'll see that. So... Um, let's see here. Sister Sadie, if you can, um, I would like you to read Amos chapter 3, 7, and 8. If you're able to, Sister Sadie. If not, I can read for you. Okay, I'll just do it. All right. Amos 3, 7, and 8. All right. Amos 3, 7, and 8. And we got... Here. So, as you see again here, even from the Sefer, surely Adonai, Yahuwah. So, you see here, they're constantly adding it. This is the second time already. H136, Adonai, and then you have the H3069 after it. Surely Adonai, Yahuwah, will do nothing but reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The Septuagint, there's no Adonai there. And actually, the Masoretic text is. Technically, they're missing Eloah there, or Elohim, after the, the Yahuwah. So the Septuagint says, for Yahuwah, Elohim will do nothing, but, reve but without revealing instruction to his servants, the prophets, a little bit more, a little bit, it makes a little bit more sense, in my opinion. So, all right, so now we are going to go to verse 8. 11 and 13, 8, 11 and 13, okay, so, um, let's see, a lion shall roar, and who will not be alarmed, Yahuwah Elohim has spoken, and who will not prophesy, so let's see what the Masoretic text says here, here we go, so now they don't have the Elohim here, they have Adonai added in, H136 again, and then they're omitting the Elohim after the H3069. So, 
And just to keep in mind, what, what was one of Yahuwah's commandments in the Torah? Do not add or take away. They're taking away the Alim and they're adding in Adonai. So again, the, the false pen of the scribes, which by the way, in Yahusha's day, the scribes he was actually talking about in context were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The, that's the scribes he was talking about. The actual, uh, the, the scholars of their day, quote unquote. Um, so let's go to verse 13 of the same chapter. As you can see, that's fine, that's fine. Verse 13, H136, again. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, says they got Adonai there, then Yahuwah, Alihim of armies. So this time they actually had the full thing, but they're adding in Adonai for no reason. You go to the Septuagint here, it will say, Hear, O you priests, and testify to the house of Yaakov, says Yahuwah. Alahim Almighty. Interesting. So no uh, Sabaoth there, but actually Almighty. It's very interesting. Um, okay, so moving on here. Um, let's see here. Okay. All right. Um, Brother Dennis, could you possibly read um, Amos chapter 4, verses 2, 5, and 13? We're on Amos 4. Yeah, I need to. Verses 2 and uh, 5 and 13. All right. Two, five, and thirteen. Yep. I like this blue oh. scroll down the screen. Okay. Five, and thirteen. Okay. Two. The Master Yahuwah has sworn by his set apartness. See, the days are coming upon you when he shall take you away with hooks and your descendants with fish hooks. And five, and burn an offering of thanksgiving with leaven. Proclaim voluntary offerings loudly, for you have loved this, you children of Yisrael, declares Master Yahuwah. That it. Two and five and thirteen. Yep. And thirteen, okay. For look, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, and who declares to man what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, and who tre treads the high places of our writs or the world. Yahuwah, Alaim of hosts is his name. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, and I think, Brother Dennis, Dennis, we should mention to the viewers and listeners that uh, where it's every time it says hosts in your Bible, it, probably more accurately, it would be armies, Yahoo of armies. Uh, yeah, Sabaoth, the Hebrew word Sabaoth actually means a mass, like a group of people, persons, uh, organized group of people, and usually it's talking about an army. Some modern translations actually put army, like the New Living Translation. Uh, so some of them actually fix that. So, so yeah, so the main problem we have here, to go back to the last verse Brother Dennis just read for us, the biggest problem here is uh, no mention of the Son here. Mm -hmm. And proclaims to men his Messiah. Yeah, that, that's a pretty big difference between his thought. I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty big difference there, in my opinion. Uh, and let's see, what was the other one? Verse 5 also, we have, let's see, they have read the law without and called for public professions. Proclaim aloud that the children of Yashar Allah have loved these things, says Yahuwah. And I think this is where they put the, yep, 
H136 Adonai, verse 5. That's where you get the master from, anyone that has like a restored name version. They're, they're fixing the Adonai just by replacing it with master is what they're doing. So instead of just ignoring the Masoretic text, which that's what I would do in my opinion, I would just ignore it and not use it. Um, then you got verse 2 here. It says, H136, Adonai, Yahuwah, has sworn by his set of partners that lo, the day shall come upon you, that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. Okay, and I think that's it. Yeah, that was verse 2, 5, and 13, which Brother Dennis uh, read for us. See here, and I think... <clears throat> Let's see here. So we had Dennis read. We had Sally read. Um, Sister Sadie, if you're not able to read, let me know. I'll take your parts. Um, let's see here. We're up to Amos 5, verse 1, uh, 3, 8, and 16. Um, Sister Shushana, could you possibly read Amos 5, verses 1, 3, 8, and 16? Um, let me see here. Let me get on the screen here while you're getting it. Um, let's see here. Verse one. Then you have. Um, let me zoom in here. Verse okay. one. Two, eight, Are you ready? Yep. Um, if I can, if I read or not, if not, I'll let uh, mm -hmm. I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. No problem, sis. Hear this word, which I take up against you, this lamentation, O house of Yasra'al. For thus says the master Yahuwah, the city that goes out by a thousand has a hundred left, and that which goes out by a hundred has, been, has ten left to the house of Yasra'al. But do not seek Beth Yal, nor enter Gilgal, nor pass over to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall certainly go into exile, and Bethel become a non-entity. Mm. And then 16. Yep. Therefore, Yahuwah Alihim of hosts, Yahuwah said, this, this there is wailing in all open squares and in all the streets. They say, alas, alas, and shall call the farmers to mourning and skilled lamenters to wailing. Thank you. Skilled lamenters to wailing. Thank you, muted brother. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Tobiah, for reminding me that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, verse one, this is the first time I've seen it in the book of Amos. I don't know if there's any other places, but verse one to start off doesn't even have the father's name there. <laughs> it's supposed to have his name there. It doesn't even tell you who's speaking. <laughs> if you go to the Septuagint here, it says, Hear ye this word of Yahuwah. That's an important uh, piece to leave out. Who's this word of? Who's the word of? Mazerites? <laughs> that right there. So that that to me is a huge difference. Um, you actually in the Greek here of Amos five will say Kurios. G two nine six two right here. Hear ye the word of Kurios Yahuwah, which I take up against you. So. The, there's no H3068 or 69 there in the Masoretic, which is pretty big in my opinion. But anyway, I'll move on to the next one here where I think it's verse 3. We have an issue here also. For thus says H136 Adonai, 
Yahuwah. So again, like the, the restoring versions, they do a great job and I'm not trying to attack them or anything, but you probably should have just left the master out. That, that, you know, I'm sorry, but Adonai does not, it's not a biblical word for master. Sorry. But you know, that, that goes back to holding on to tradition. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Why, why our people keep holding on tr to tradition. Um, but anyway, so I, at the end of this study, I'm going to show you guys why it's such a big deal that all these Adonai's are being added. Um, I'm going to give you a link to the history of Adonai and it, how it comes from Adonis and all that. But anyway, I'm going to continue on here. Verse eight and 16. Um, okay. So it says, and this is a pretty interesting one. Um, sister Shushana just read it, how it's talking about he makes the seven stars in Orion. Septuagen here says, who makes all things. I kind of like how the Septuagen says all things. It's not just Orion, not just the constellations. He makes all things. He makes everything. Um, and changes them and turns darkness into morning and darkness the day into night who calls for water of the sea and pours it out on the face of the earth. Yahuwah is his name. Uh, yep. Yeah. So the main difference in verse eight is not really with, uh, there's no Adonai added there, but you have makes all things in the Septuagint versus, you know, the seven stars in Orion, um, which is kind of interesting because even the Masoretic text shows you there's a difference between the constellation and the stars stars are not constellations so that's kind of interesting to me um let's see here i think i'll read amos 6 verse 8 here amos 6 8 and let's see here then all right here we go amos 6 8 H136, Adonai, Yahuwah has sworn by himself and says, Yahuwah Alahim of Sabaoth, armies, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces, therefore I will deliver the city up the city with all that is therein. So again, you have the Adonai being added there in verse 8, which in the Septuagint is nowhere to be found. That's another thing, the Septuagint never carries over. Uh, 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 extra curios. If, and this is the point I wanted to make, if, if Adonai is a real Paleo Hebrew word, guess what? That would have been carried over into the Septuagint because the Septuagint translated straight from the Paleo Hebrew into Greek. So there would have been a, a, a second G2962 if that's the case. I mean, I'm just saying. For behold, has sworn by himself, saying, because I abhor all the pride of Jacob, I do also hate his countries. I will cut off his city with all who inhabit it. So it's pretty similar. The H136, again, though, is the main difference. Again, Adonai being added. And I think um, I'm just going to finish our study off here since we're pretty much almost done. All right, so we're going to go next to Amos chapter 7, verses 1 to 2. I'll start off there, Amos 7, 1 to 2. And we'll start with using the Masoretic here. Thus has H136, Adonai, Yahuwah, H3069, showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth, and lo, the latter growth after the king's mowings. And it came to pass when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O oh, Adonai again, H136, Yahuwah, forgive, I beseech you, by whom shall Yaakov arise, for he small. So that's how the Masoretic reads. You go to the Septuagint, it says, and it came to pass. Or right, let's start off with uh, verse 1 here, because verse 1 shows that there should be a Alahim here, because the Greek here has kurios theos. 
So that's a big thing too. So you sometimes the Masoretic will even have Alahim missing, which is very interesting to me. Um, thus set, thus has Yahuwah Alahim showed me, and behold, a swarm of locusts coming from the east, and behold, one caterpillar, King Gog. Interesting. Mentions Gog. Does the Masoretic mention Gog? <laughs> That's interesting. So you have a connection now to Gog and Magog of Ezekiel 38. That's pretty interesting in my opinion. Um, if that's really talking about the same Gog. Um, verse 2, And it came to pass when he had finished devouring the grass of the land that I said, Yahuwah Alihim, again. So now we, not just that and I is being added in verse 1 or 2. You have um, Alihim being completely omitted there, um, which I find kind of interesting. And it came to pass when he had finished devouring the grass of the land that I said, Yahuwah Alihim, be merciful. Who shall raise up Yaakov? For he is small in number. Hmm. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's go to, okay, let's go to um, verses four to eight here. And all right, verses four to eight. Okay, here we go. Verse four. Thus has Yahuwah showed me, and behold, Yahuwah called for judgment or right ruling by fire, and it devoured the great deep. Interesting, devoured the great deep. So there's waters under the earth. Hmm. Interesting. And devoured Yahuwah's portion. Huh. So now if we go to the Masoretic here, whoa, there's a bunch of Adonai's here. <laughs> Thus has H136, Yahuwah showed unto me. Behold, H136, Yahuwah called to contend by fire. So you have one, two Adonai's already added in this verse in front of the Yahuwah's there. No mention of the title Alahim after the Tetragrammaton. Uh, and then it says to contend by fire and devoured the great deep and did eat up a part. So the major difference is that you got two H136s in the modern Hebrew text being added in here where they shouldn't be here. Um, so, And, of course, there's two omissions of the title Alahim that should be after the, the H3069. Um, so that was verse four there. So let's go down to verse five. It says, then I said, oh, H136, Adonai, Yahuwah, cease, I beseech you, by whom shall Yaakov arise, for he small. Um, here we go, repented. Yahuwah repented, or actually, more accurately, the Nakam probably means to regret something. I would say regret. Yahuwah doesn't need to repent of anything. Um, Yahuwah relented for this. This also shall not be, says H136, Adonai, Yahuwah. So verse 6 has an Adonai. Going down to verse 7 here. So, and just to show you again, if you go to the Brens here, there's no Adonai. This shall not be, says Yahuwah. That's it. Then we go to verse 7 here. Thus he showed me, and behold, H136, Adonai, stood upon a wall by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. Then if we go to the Bretons, thus says Yahuwah, there's no, there's no Greek equivalent to the H136, showed me, and behold, he stood upon a wall of adamant, and in his hand was an adamant. Okay, pretty similar, but again, there's no Adonai in the Septuagint. <clears throat> here we go here, um, verse 8. And Yahuwah said unto me, Amos, what 
do you see? And I said, a plumb line. He said, then said, H136, Adonai. So now he's calling, now they're making Amos call Yahuwah by name, Adonai. Behold, I will set at a plumb line in the midst of my people, Yashar all. I will not again pass by them anymore. So if you ever wondered why, where this tradition of the calling Yahuwah Adonai comes from, like by name calling him Adonai, it's really the Maserite's fault. They on purpose put H136 here, so making Amos call Yahuwah Adonai. Anyway, so if you go to Septuagint, it's not there. It would just say, and Yahuwah said to me, what do you see, Amos? And I said, an adamant, and Yahuwah said to me, behold, I appoint an adamant into the midst of my people, Yashar all. I will not pass by them any more. And so now we're going to go to the next bullet point here. So I think you guys that are viewing and listening that will see this on Facebook Live right now, that are seeing it on Facebook Live and seeing it on YouTube later, you'll, you're seeing a, a reoccurring theme here with the Masoretic text. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Amos chapter 8, verses 1. And we got, there's a couple others from chapter 8. So first go to 8, verse 1. And this is interesting. I might have I might have messed up on that. I don't think I Amos eight verse one. Okay. Let's see here. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. Thus has we already got an Adonai first verse of the new chapter already. Thus has Adonai Yahuwah showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And what's interesting is that Amos 1 just says, and a fowler's, a fowler's basket. So that's kind of interesting. That's like a huge difference there. So unless the verse numberings are off or something, that's the only thing I can think of, that it would be like that. Uh, maybe the verse numberings are a little bit off. No, it doesn't. So uh, that's kind of like a negative and a positive at the same time for the Masoretic text. At least they mention Yahuwah in the H3069 in, in the first verse, where the Septuagint just says, and behold, a fowler's, blast, uh, a fowler's basket. Wow. Interesting. Huh. The Apostolic Bible Polyglot actually, uh, I guess, corrected uh, Breton's mistake in verse 1. Okay, it's kind of cool. And there's no Adonai there. I kind of like that. Thus, Yahuwah, G2962, Kurios, all caps here, showed to me, and behold, a container of a fowler. So I kind of like that. It's kind of cool. Uh, I definitely recommend the Pasolic Bible Polyglot with the Strongs um, for those of our brothers and sisters that use eSword like I do. It's good to test different translations of the Septuagint, too, I would say. To me, that's a very important thing. Um, uh, cause English translators make mistakes, you know? So anyway, but the point of the matter is the Masoretic text has Adonai there. Septuagint doesn't just says Yahuwah. So that's the difference there. Now we're going to go to eight verse 11, which is probably going to continue the theme of this here. And actually, no, let's go to, let's go in order here. Actually, yeah, I should have done this in order. So it's a little bit easier. That way I'm not jumping up and down. Um, so let's let's go to the next one. I think the next one in order would be verse 3, actually. Then we'll go to verse 5. So verse 3 should be following that same pattern, though, the Adonai, if, if I remember correctly. Um, and the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, says Adonai Yahuwah, again, the H136 precedes the H3069 in the verse. Many dead bodies in every place, they shall be cast forth with silence. And if you look at the Septuagint here, instead of Adonai Yahuwah, it's Yahuwah Alehim. And the ceilings of the temple shall howl in that day, says Yahuwah Alehim. There shall be many a fallen one in every place. I will bring silence unto them. So another time, that's another instance of the Adonai being added. And now we're going to go to verse five, which this is a whole different topic of 
new moon versus month and whether there's distinction made in the Masoretic text versus the Septuagint in this, this uh, issue here. Because here, I'll show you here. Um, let's see here. So I'll read first from the Masoretic, Amos 8.5, saying, when will the new moon? So because of the way it's translated in English, we're thinking, oh, it's the new moon. Uh, it's talking about the new moon, but you'll see in the Septuagint the difference. Um, Be gone that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and satisfying, false, my bad, not satisfying, falsifying the balances by deceit. Now, if you go to the Septuagint, in that same word, it's month, not the first of the month, but a month in general, like 30-day period, saying, when shall go by the month, the whole month, 30 days? that we shall make trade and most likely if you read the torah i believe my interpretation of this verse especially looking at what the septuagint is saying with month talking about a month period instead of just the new moon like the first day of the new month it's most likely talking about the sabbatical year any of our brothers and sisters i've read about that in leviticus and stuff like that so that's what i believe it's actually talking about it's talking about them waiting they would have to wait until that sabbatical year is over, maybe the last month of that sabbatical year, so that they can start um, putting the, um, what is it called, the sickle to the grain and stuff like that, and start harvesting and start selling the wheat again. So I could be wrong, but I, I hold to that belief about the context of this verse because of what the Septuagint says. Says um, the month go by and we shall make trade and the Sabbaths that we shall open the treasury to make the measure small and unequally magnify the scale weight and to make the yoke unrighteous, like the scale, the scales and the balances. I agree. So to me, uh, the the Septuagint makes more of a distinction between when it's talking about the when it. The, the actual set apart day when the month starts, whatever calendar you believe you're on, there is a distinction in the Septuagint between when the, uh, the start of a month on that particular day, what that's called, and versus a whole month period. They, they actually make a distinction in the Greek. Um, this word here is G3376, mané. The, the, the word that they actually use to talk about the first day of the new month is actually numenia. I think it's called in the Greek is uh, new mania. So mane is actually month. So I just wanted to make a distinction there and show that distinction. So the, it's, it gets very confusing with the Masoretic text, even in that aspect. It, they lump the two things together, uh, a 30 day period with the first of the new month, you know, so it's kind of confusing. Um, anyway, but uh, Amos chapter nine, Verse 1, 5, and 8. So we're back to the Adonai stuff. But yeah, I would encourage our brothers and sisters to study that whole month thing out. And, oh, my bad. I'm getting this background noise. My bad about that. I should have been monitoring the um, a little bit better. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. Amos chapter 9, verse 1. I saw Yahuwah standing on the altar. That's what the Septuagint has here. And he said, smite the mercy seat and, por and the porch shall be shaken and cut through in the heads of all. And I will slay with the remnant of them with the sword and no one of them fleeing shall escape and no one of them striving to save himself shall be delivered. Okay, so... Here, the Masoretic will have, I saw Adonai, H136, standing. So now, now they're making the prophet Amos calling Yahuwah Adonai is like that's his name. Again, this is where that deception comes from. H136. There's no Yahuwah being mentioned here. It's just Adonai. So this is probably would be the defense of people that hold to that tradition. Well, in the text, it says Adonai. That's that's where the deception comes in there. So, and I'm going to read also verse 5 and verse 8 of that chapter. We're almost done here. Um, so, 
I expect that the viewers and listeners are seeing I have no bias whatsoever. I'm showing you both versions. You can study it out for yourself as you're seeing it on my shared screen. You, I'm not, I have no bias whatsoever, Greek over Hebrew or anything like that. Okay. So Amos 9.5 from, from the sub. Um, from the Masoretic text of the King James with Strom says, and H136 again, Adonai, Yahuwah of armies, is he that touches the land and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn and it shall rise up, woolly like a flood, and shall be drawn as the flood of Egypt. So now he's comparing his wrath that he has right now that he's about to execute as the flood of Egypt. But the big problem we have here is the Adonai again. Now, this is interesting. This really exposes the Adonai. Amos 9.5 in the Septuagint. And Yahuwah, Yahuwah Elohim, Almighty, is he that takes hold of the land and causes it to shake, and all that inhabit it shall mourn. So the way the Septuagint actually has it read they, they, it's very possible they could have actually like substituted it or actually omitted it in here because there's actually two kurioses in the Greek here, and then you have a theos. So actually, what what probably happened was they changed, um, they either changed one of these in the Masoretic text, they changed it to Adonai, or they literally took out the first. Yahuwah and put Adonai there. Either way, it's bad. Um, so you have in the just to reiterate, the Septuagint would read, and Yahuwah, Yahuwah Elohim Almighty, is he that takes hold of the land and causes it to shake, and all that inhabitant shall mourn, and its destruction shall go up as a river, and shall descend as the river of Egypt. So now we are see here i think that was verse eight i believe oh no that was verse five let me go down to verse eight now so we got verse eight of chapter nine also Let's see here here we go we'll start with the masoretic here behold the eyes of h136 adonai yahuwah upon the sinful kingdom and i will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says Yahuwah. And as we turn to the Septuagint here, there's no Adonai. Behold, the eyes of Yahuwah Elohim are upon the kingdom of sinners, and I will cut it off from the face of the earth. Only I, interesting, a little bit more specific there, only I will utterly cut off the house of Jacob, says Yahuwah. Let me just check that. Does Masoretic text say only I? Huh. That's interesting. The Masoretic text makes it seem like he's not going to utterly cut them off. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. Oh, no. Okay, no, it says the same thing. I'm just reading it the wrong way. Okay, only I will not. Okay, I missed the will not in the substitution. My bad about that. Um, so that was... Amos chapter 9, verse 8, and again, you have the Adonai being added in front of the Tetragrammaton. Um, so let's see here. The last thing I wanted to do here, we're at the end of today's study, is mention this last one, which is pretty different in my opinion, and actually the Hebrew word Shabbat is omitted in Amos 6, verse 3. To me, this is a big deal. Other brothers and sisters like us that want to guard and hold to the Father's commandments, this is a big deal that this is taken out. Um, says here in Amos 6, 3 in the Masoretic, you that put far away the evil day and caused the seat of violence to come near. What? Seat of violence? Would, could you be a little bit more specific? Okay. Um, Septuagint says, you who are approaching the evil day, who are drawing near and adopting false Sabbaths. Okay, so there's the seat of violence that probably they're talking about, but they paraphrase it instead of just, you know, actually translating it the right way. I wonder if the Masoretic text has a definition for this violence it's referring to. 
yeah, it's, it's being very vague, even in the Strong's Concordance. Unrighteous gain. Even that, that's different. I mean, the only way I could reconcile that with what the Septuagint actually says is that the context of the unrighteous gain would be that they're, they're buying and selling on the Sabbath, they're, or maybe they're, they're waiting for the Sabbath to be over to buy and sell, and that you, they're trying to do unrighteous gain either on the Sabbath or not really keeping the Sabbath. You know, that's the only way I could reconcile what the Masoretic text says versus what the Septuagint says in the same verse. The Septuagint mm -hmm. lets you know they're adopting false Sabbaths, like quite, quite blatant. So I would definitely prefer the Septuagint in this, um, in chapter 6, verse 3. So and just to show you that he's not adding Sabbaths in there, here's the G4521, Sabaton. And on my Strong's Plus on my eSword here, I can scroll down here. It will say LXX related words, Shabbat. Shabbaton is the Hebrew version of Sabaton. Okay. So that was omitted from Amos 6.3. So, and also the word for false, obviously. So that whole phrase. Um, so anyway, I pray that this study was a baraka for everyone that was involved. And thank you for joining us. Um, I just... I just um, I just wanted to put this study out there to intrigue people, to encourage people. Oh, before I forget, I did promise you guys I was going to show you the link and show you the page that talks about. I'm going to do this for every video in our study series of exposing the Adonis deception. So um, let me see here. I think I sent it. I'm trying to see here. I think. My brothers and sisters might have it. I think it's Phoenicia.org, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see here. Let me just look for that real quick. So basically, in short, Adonis is the Greek version of Adonai. And basically, it goes all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis. So... When in Jeremiah 23, 27, I started our study off today by saying, they have forgot Yahuwah's name in the worship of Baal. That's literal. So they've, they've adopted uh, a name that was used for Baal. Yeah, so let, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to find, let me see here. Here's the website. This is the Adonis website. I think called, I put it in the chat there, brother. Thank, thank you, Tobias. Thank you very much. Um, let me see here. Yeah, thank so you. Me, I'm just sending it back to you. Sent it to me the other day. So. Right. Yeah, I I appreciate it, and some of our brothers and sisters, I think they will appreciate what we're sharing here. Just to open their eyes to this stuff. I mean, we're we got to get rid of these man-made traditions, and adding to the Father's word is not cool. It's not, not cool at all. So, and I, you know, I'm not trying to attack ISR, Hallelujah Scriptures. They probably meant well. They didn't realize. I mean, for the most part, these translators don't use the Septuagint for their Old Testament. So, I mean, it's ignorance for most of this stuff. Um, but here you go, Phoenicia.org, which basically Adonis Adonai goes all the way back to Baal of the Phoenician religion. So that's why they have it on this Phoenicia.org thing. Um, the myth and the cult of Adonis. The myth and cult of Adonis. Yeah, okay, I don't need you. No, no, no. I'll read that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Adonis is a young fertility god, a comely young beloved by Astarte. Astarte. So... We obviously know who Astarte is, okay? Any of us that have researched the cult of Nimrod and Semiramis, Semiramis was And represents death and rebirth in an oriental vegetation cult. <clears throat> okay, so, and represents the death, rebirth, and oral vegetation cult. He is also known as the uh, agricultural div divinity named Eshmoon. Adonis is derived from the Canaanite title Adon, okay, so that's where the Hebrews got it from, where it says in your Hallelujah scriptures, Adon Yahuwah, uh, Don was added in there, 
Um, it is Semitic word for master or lord, and I means my, therefore Adonai, the I at the end, the A-I at the end makes it my. Adonis is the Hellenized version of the saint, translates as my lord. Now, you also got to think about it, too. Remember that there was a Hellenization in Jerusalem. We, we, need to, we need to know our history, too. So it's very possible when some of the Yahudim, not everyone was on the Maccabean side, in the book of Maccabees, when you read the book of Maccabees. So I just want to end today's study and kind of read a little bit for you guys. This, this is where Adonai comes from. It's Baal. It's Nimrod. Okay? So when you're calling Yahuwah Adonai, you're esteeming the one the major, major, major false god he hated. The false deity he hated. Um, constantly in scripture, you'll see they forsook Yahuwah and followed the Baals and Ashtaroths. Adonai is one of them. Okay, so we, we really need to unlearn this terminology. It's very bad, in my opinion. Very bad. Um, I mean, this article is a great article. I, I suggest whoever is interested in digging deep into this subject, study it for yourself. Take into consideration that every scripture we brought up today, that, that Adonai is nowhere to be seen in the Septuagint, in every verse we brought up. There's no second kurios. Um, the only second kurios was actually for Yahuwah in that one verse I saw from Amos. And it seems like it was uh, a direct substitution. Um, from that one verse that I read where it says, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Elohim, Almighty is his name. So anyway, so my prayer is that you would really pray to the Father today, pray to Yahuwah in Yahusha's name and ask him to reveal to you this stuff. And I'm just a messenger, I'm just a vessel, all right? So, you know, uh, the last thing I want to share with you today, before you get mad at this message, really think about it and and really ponder about it and just just remember what Paul said in Galatians 4:13 Have I become your enemy because I have told you the truth So and let me see let me make sure that's the right verse um cuz I could have swore that's the right verse there um let me just see here real quick. I could have swore that's, or maybe it's 313. I always get confused sometimes. Um, see here. Let me just uh, search that real quick. Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? 416. All right. My bad about that, guys. Just wanted to end that. For the viewers and listeners, Galatians 4.16, um, like I said, before you get angry and start getting emotional about this and, you know, you want to cling to your traditions, just think about this right here. Galatians 4.16, have, have we become your enemy because we have told you the truth? And that's just something for you to think about. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you have not accepted... Um, Yahushua is your personal savior. I would pray that you would um, and that you would seek him before it's too late. We are in these last days. So I do my prayer today is that for anyone seeing this online, on YouTube, wherever, it, uh, that you would accept Yahushua before it's too late. Um, thank you for joining us. Shalom.